Hey, how's it going, everybody? It is Josh Thomas here from the Bit Block, and as you might know, we are less than a month away from E3 2019. So I can think of nobody better to sit down and have a chat about predictions and hopes and desires than Mr. Rogers Bass himself. It is unfortunate that you caught me on the day after I got back from Japan while I'm sick, while I'm hacking up a lung. Not maybe, maybe the best time to record an E3 <laughs> prediction video, but gosh darn it, this is the Animal Crossing year. Yes. So we got to talk about Animal Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so disclaimer, um, me and Roger might cough a little bit. I also am yeah. getting over a, yeah. a cough as well. So, But um, we're talking about E3, so I think it's it's okay. Oh, um, yeah. So like I said, it's going to be our, our sort of predictions, but we'll also talk about what we're excited about and what we just think Nintendo is going to be doing at E3 2019. Um, just really quick to start it off, Roger, one of the things that I've thought is we know about a lot of games that are coming out for the rest of this year. Oh, and yeah. Nintendo did say that they're going to be focusing on 2019 games. Um, and they have said that in the past, and then they kind of slip a couple things in there that aren't coming out this year. But with that in mind, I think it's... It's sort of reasonable to believe that what we'll be seeing at this E3 is sort of quantity of games rather than big, oh my god, nobody would have predicted that, surprises. Mm. So we've got, you know, just to go over the, the list here, we've got Animal Crossing is, I will be shocked if it's not shown at E3. Not oh, only yeah. will I, I will be on fire if it's not shown <laughs> at E3. So we've got Animal Crossing, Luigi's Mansion 3, Super Mario Maker 2, uh, the Fire Emblem game. There's also that game from Platinum Games, I forget the name of it, you probably remember. Oh, Astral Chain. I love okay. it. Okay, yeah. yep, there's that. And uh, and then there's Link's Awakening as well. Uh, yep. So there, there are a lot of big named games that we are obviously going to hear more about at E3 because we don't know much about them already. Um, yep. and, oh, and of course, Pokemon. Why didn't... What, whoa, you didn't call me out on not mentioning well, Pokemon? I, I, the thing is, is Pokemon re in recent years has had a big presence at E3. But uh -huh. prior to about two years ago, Pokemon never really did have a big presence. Occasionally they would do a little thing in that, um, there's like that private area that's on the second floor of the convention center where they have the little developer talks. And occasionally they would do Pokemon developer talks. Like I think they did one for X and Y and they did one for black and white as well, if my memory serves me correctly. Um, and so that was pretty much all we used to get in terms of Pokemon at E3. Um, and so that's really kind of all that I expect out of Sword and Shield at this E3 as well, because I really do think their focus is going to be on Animal Crossing, Link's Awakening. I mean, they have so many other games, and I feel like Pokemon Company is going to take E3 week to uh, sort of have their own little mini direct. That's kind of what they did with the past couple Pokemon games as well. They did, like, Pokemon directs the same week as E3. And maybe they'll be, like, a big portion of the booth that's dedicated to a Sword and Shield demo, but I honestly don't think it's going to be a big portion of their Nintendo Direct. I think that's up to Pokemon Company. Yeah, I mean, I predict we'll get a new trailer, and then they'll oh, kind of sure. move onward to the next thing. Yeah, um, yeah. Has Nintendo mentioned how long their E3 Direct will be, or do we not know? I actually don't know. Again, I I've been in Japan mentioned. for the past two weeks, so if they've announced anything, it's like it's been completely over my head. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think that they specifically said how long it will be. Um, which is interesting because usually they do. So maybe we'll get a longer one. Yeah. If they want to talk to us for like 50 minutes, I'm down as long as it's well paced. Yeah. Um, but you did mention a little game that I've been known to enjoy from time to time. <laughs> uh, Animal Crossing. Do we both Woo! sort of do we both sort of agree that this is probably going to be poised to be the big Animal Crossing E3? Yeah, there's like, no way that Animal Crossing is not shown off at this thing. That's the one big game that we really don't know a lot about that's still coming out this year. Mm -hmm. And Nintendo just had their big financial report in Japan. Uh, they announced that Animal Crossing is not getting a delay. It is still slated for a 2019 release. I think the only thing that got delayed was Bayonetta 3. And I, I think none of us really expected that to come out this year anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like maybe we'll get a trailer for Bayonetta 3 at some point during the uh, E3 Direct, but I don't expect like a playable demo or anything. I think that might be one of those games that doesn't come out this year that still gets talked about. But I really do think that the big portion of their E3 is going to be dedicated to Animal Crossing. I wouldn't be surprised if there's like an Animal Crossing village at the booth where you walk right. into the little <laughs> characters' houses and you demo the games. So. So, so that's the funny thing. Like, you know, in yeah. the past, Nintendo's E3 really did have that one standout game that made yeah. sense to have the whole booth or themed around like super mario odyssey yeah. super smash brothers ultimate um yeah. legend of zelda breath of the wild but this year it seems like they could almost do 
a lot of um, design. Like, you know, they can oh, make yeah. an area that's Luigi's Mansion themed, and then they could have- You could have the Link's area. Raft from right, right. Link's Awakening, so exactly, there's, yeah. There's so much they can do with the design of the booth. It's pretty exciting. I mean, I won't be yeah. there, but it's always fun to, you know, watch your videos of your vlogs from it. Of course, of course. And stuff. And yeah, cool. Nintendon's going to be staying with me this year, so oh. that'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be doing our live. Matthew, uh, you know Matthew. He's going to be staying with I me as well. Yeah. So yeah, we're going to probably do like triple live reactions and stuff. It should be a good time. Yeah, that's going to be great. Um, okay, so let's talk, so we'll kind of go in game by game, like from what we know, and then we'll talk about like maybe speculate what they could show sure. that we don't know. Um, so with Animal Crossing, for me, I really, I know this is going to sound maybe hypocritical, maybe a little weird. I almost want them to play it a little bit safe with this game. I want it to still feel like Animal Crossing. I want the beautiful, quaint village. What I'd like for them to do is just expand everything. You know, I want to Agreed. still, I yeah. want to still be the mayor, but there's so much you could do as the mayor that they didn't really do in New Leaf. It's a very untapped idea, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So just take New Leaf, make it beautiful in HD, have way better online, and just expand everything. Little details, big details, all that. I just don't want them to do something drastic like they have with other franchises, to where, mm -hmm. in my opinion, they kind of ruin them. Paper Mario, Mario Party, uh, Star Fox Zero is another one. So yeah, I don't know. I just we don't I really... we don't speak of that game, Josh. We don't speak. Of that game. <laughs> we also don't speak of the E3 three years ago where you were with me, That's and right. I waited in line for two hours to play that oh, game you so I can get my R wing pin. And then we went to the media booth afterwards, and they were like, "Oh yeah, here's here's an R wing pin." I'm like, "Are you serious? <laughs> I could have just walked into the booth, eaten cake with Reggie, and not waited in that line? Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, unbelievable!" Yeah. By the way, shout out to the uh, fan who just gave me their R wing R wing pin. <laughs> right. 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 Like, oh my god, are you sure? Because you had to wait in line for like three hours to get this. Are you sure you want to just give it to oh, me? Oh man, I still have that it on was, my desk. <laughs> that was unfortunate too, because that was one of the worst E3s I know, I I've been ever had, and you went. But I think we made it fun. It yeah, oh, yeah, really funny three. But it was mm -hmm. yeah. In terms of content, we look back at it. It's like wow, Amiibo Festival, Star Fox Zero, and Federation Force, uh -huh. and Chibi <laughs> Robo Ziplash was there as well. I remember that. Yeah, like, yep. Boy. And they had uh, they had Mario Tennis Ultra Smash as well, which so. we didn't know at the time was the final game. Right. <laughs> right, 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 right. At um, least Mario Tennis Aces turned out pretty good. Yeah, you know, that's okay. That was supposed to be, so. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, so <laughs> Animal Crossing, what would you like to see from Animal Crossing? You, you, you were sort of agreeing that you'd like for them not to do anything too crazy with it. Yeah, I agree with you. I do want them to play it safe, but there are a couple small things that I want. Uh, one, I don't know if you've been playing Pocket Camp at all, mm -hmm. but there have been a lot of really great furniture sets that were right. introduced in Pocket Camp that I would love to see introduced into the mainline series. Uh, I also really would like some more Amiibo support. I think that was one thing that I liked about New Leaf, was that you can just get the cards of your favorite villagers, scan them in, and then have a town with all your favorites. Mm -hmm. And I'm only saying this not so I could scan an entire town of all my favorite villagers in, but I just want Clay the Hamster day one, all right? That's my <laughs> favorite Animal Crossing villager. I bought the Animal Crossing Amiibo card specifically for this upcoming Animal Crossing Switch game, so I really hope <laughs> they don't take out the Amiibo support. I just want Clay the Hamster there day one. He's my best buddy in Animal Crossing. He's got to be there. Uh, I really want more customization options. I want them to go all out with the Able Sisters. I'd love oh, to yeah. see some new uh, customization options for 2019. Pants, and hats, I also shoes. Yes, oh, that'd be awesome. One other thing I want, too, is if they bring back the city, I really, I've wanted this since City Folk. When they introduced that there was going to be a city, I was like, please make it so that I could buy a high-rise in the city and look out over the city in my little penthouse. I think it'd be so cool to like be able to buy an apartment in a building with all your friends. Um, that's just, that's like an untapped thing. The idea of having a, an apartment in the city, but also having your home in the quaint village, I think that'd be really cool. And you mentioned the stuff with the mayor. Uh, one thing I would actually really like, and I brought this up, I think, on previous discussions that we had, I would really like it if all of my friends could live in my same village with me, and then we could hold elections to see who could be the mayor every month or so. So, like, I could run my town the way that I want to run it with all my friends in the town, but then if all you guys don't like the, the ordinances that I'm putting in place, you can have elections and basically the way that you win the election is by buttering up the other villagers by doing tasks for them or being their friends and really making them like you. I think that would be a really cool little way to introduce uh, more of the mayoral mechanics that were introduced in New Leaf while also introducing more mechanics that uh, have you interacting with your friends. Mm -hmm. So I would love to see some type of like election thing with your friends and, uh, and becoming the mayor. I think it'd be cool. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm so excited to see what they've come up with with this game. Absolutely. So, yeah. I, it's funny. I, I 
posted in the community section on YouTube. And I was just like, oh my God, you guys, we are like literally less than a month away from yeah. finally seeing a new Animal Crossing game. I just thought of something, by the way, something I really want, new species. Okay. I want some more new species. In particular, I want bats. I think okay. it's shocking that we haven't had bats yet. I think they're sort of an untapped one. I want bats and I want sharks. <laughs> I want sharks because you did your little make-believe thing and I was like, I want this to be real. <laughs> I really want sharks in Animal Crossing, like little shark villagers. I know it wouldn't make a lot of sense to have fish on dry land, but uh, well, there's an still, octopus. give me shark villagers. Yeah, but octopi can live on land too, so... Well, there's talking hamsters, so I don't know. That's, I feel like yeah, I feel like logic was thrown out the window from day yeah, one with this exactly, franchise. Exactly. <laughs> my my um my logic behind that when I was making the idea was that they move in on the beach only. So it's like, oh well, they're still close to the water. So that's cool. I like that. Well, then if they're gonna do that, then maybe like put whales in there or something. Well, so that's the other thing. Whales, I did... like dolphins or something. Uh -huh, like that. I didn't get a chance to like show it yet, but in the concept art that I've done, I had like dolphins, manatees, um, like just like nautical neighbors is what I was calling it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that would be really cool. I agree. Are there any Are there any new species you want in particular in Animal Crossing that you feel are missing? Um. I, I, well, I mean, like I said, like we said, sharks and I think whales, yep. dolphins, that yep. stuff would be cool. I, I think a toucan type of a bird. Oh, would be a toucan neat. bird would be awesome. Yeah. yeah. So there's, I, I mean, there's that. so many animals they could do uh, that it's just, yeah. I think they had, a, I think in an interview they once mentioned there is a rule where they don't make the villagers the same species as a mainline character. So, like, mm -hmm. you wouldn't see a walrus because Wendell is the walrus or, or well, like the otters, you wouldn't yeah. see, th yeah. Right. So, yeah, but it's still, I mean, how many, there's like billions of species on this planet. I think they can come up with some more. I, oh, I want. It's some. a real shame, though, because, like, I love blathers, but <laughs> I also want owl <laughs> villagers. Like, I love owls. Those are probably one of my top five favorite animals of all time. So if I could have a town of owls, I'd be in heaven. But like you said, that'll probably never happen. Yeah, I think they have a rule about that. Yeah, um, yeah. I want to see, I know this would be maybe weird, but what they could do with, like, a crab somehow in the Animal Crossing Oh, universe. yeah. Oh, a crab would be really cute. Yeah. yeah. Like a, or like work. a shrimp. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That'd be good. <laughs> like Splatoon. Yeah. I mean, they designed one in Splatoon. Same oh, yeah. Well, they so. could do squids. I mean, they could do squids. <laughs> they really want to. Yeah. There you go. That's um, one thing I'd actually really like, too, is... You know how they had the little villagers that were themed like the characters from uh, Splatoon? Oh, in yeah. The yeah, and, and Zelda. Yeah, I would love to see more stuff like that uh -huh. with the amiibos, where you can have Epona in your town and, uh, you know, like the, the Squid Sisters and stuff. That kind of thing would be really great. I love that in the Welcome Amiibo update, and I think that'd be a, a welcome thing to return for right. uh, Animal Crossing on Switch. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I think is kind of cool is with Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, the developers finally convinced the Pokemon company to allow Pokemon in Animal Crossing. Oh, um, nice. Be before that, there was this thing where the Pokemon company didn't really want to. Uh, but now I guess they changed their mind, so I think it'd be neat. Now we can have Pokemon items in the Switch game, because I don't know if you've seen them in Pocket Camp, but there was like a whole event where you could get Pokemon oh, yeah. and stuff. That was one of the sets I was thinking about that I would really yeah. like them to bring over. Mm -hmm. The thing I'd really like, though, is uh, just let Pikachu and Eevee move into my town. I think that'd be <laughs> glorious. <laughs> Literally looking like them or looking like a version of like no, an Animal Crossing? like an Animal Crossing okay. version of Pikachu <laughs> and Eevee. Yeah, exactly. That would be neat, yeah. I mean, there's a lot. There's so much they could do just with that Nintendo um, fan service alone in oh, Animal yeah. Crossing. That's great. Absolutely. Um, so I think that pretty much covers Animal Crossing. We, I could talk about that for hours, but I think just oh, me too. to keep this a healthy conversation, we should probably move on. Um, <laughs> we Actually, let's touch on this a bit. So mm -hmm. Super Mario Maker 2, which is a game that I am so excited about. Me too, actually, yeah. We got to make levels for each other and then see if we can beat them. Do a little challenges yes. back and forth. Do live streams levels. on Twitch where we're like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like it. I like it. <laughs> um, so that comes out June 28th, I believe. Mm -hmm. yep. And uh, so that's a little bit, a couple weeks after E3. Do you think they'll show that a lot at E3 or do they kind of say, you know, well, we'll do like a special overview direct for that when it comes out? No, I unfortunately for me, because I'm a big Fire Emblem fan, I think Fire Emblem and Mario Maker aren't really going to be shown off that much at this E3 mm -hmm. because they're both coming out very soon after the event actually happens. So I think we'll get like a big blowout trailer for both of them, but I really don't think there's going to be a big focus. And I say unfortunately, but actually I'd rather them spend time on games that aren't coming out in the near future. Um, so, But I really don't think that Mario Maker and uh, Fire Emblem are going to get that big of a push. Again, I think we're going to get really big trailers for them that break down all the big new features of those games. But again, I don't think they're going to be more than maybe five minutes in the direct each. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I can see that as well. I, I do yeah. think they'll have um, 
I do think they'll have demos of Super Mario Maker on the booth at the booth. Oh yeah. Oh, for sure. There'll be demos of both of those games. Yeah, because I remember. I, I really don't think there's going to be like uh, designated sections that are as big or grandiose as like say Animal Crossing or Pokemon. Right. right. When I went in 2015, they had that sort of big circle area of demos mm -hmm. of Super Mario Maker, and it was like a big thing that a stage where Charles Martinet was talking and stuff. Yep. I don't yep. think they'll do that same thing for Mario Maker Two. Um, and instead, I think I remember Yoshi's Woolly World was coming out at the time, and it was like a month right. away. I think they'll kind of do that to where they'll maybe have like four or five demo units for it or something. Um, it is a huge release, though, so I don't know. Maybe yeah. Nintendo will view it as being more important than we think, like as far as showing it off. Um, but I'm very excited about it. It's, it looks so cool. And uh, oh, yeah. I, I think there's probably a lot of stuff about that game we don't know yet. So giving us a really good two and a half, three minute trailer for E3. I'm very much looking forward to it. Like, there's a little car. There was, like, a Koopa in a car in the box art, which is, like, what's right, that about? Right? <laughs> yeah, so I, I can't wait to play around with that game. That's going to be, like, my summer game to just constantly See, go to. See, the only thing I really care about in regards to Mario Maker 2, because I played a lot of Mario Maker on Wii U. I think it's one of the best games on that system. Mm -hmm. uh, the only games on that system, I guess, that hasn't already been ported to Switch. But uh, the, the one thing I really liked about Mario Maker was the Amiibo costumes. I've been talking right. about Amiibo a lot in this discussion, but I genuinely liked the, the interactions that you had with the Amiibos, and I would love to see costumes in Mario Maker 2 for the entire Smash Bros. Ultimate set. Like, I want to see little 8-bit Solid Snake and little 8-bit Simon <laughs> Belmont running around these Mario levels. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the things I'm actually most excited for, is I want to see the Amiibo costumes return, and I really do hope that they can get the rights to all those characters. Maybe when Sakurai, you know, made his agreements with, uh, you know, Atlas for Joker and Konami for Snake and for Simon Belmont, he also put in a little thing like, hey, by the way, design a little 8-bit version for Mario Maker 2. Well, in the original Super Mario Maker, we've got Sonic, we've got Pac-Man, everybody, uh, Mega yeah, Man I mean, they as were well. All in there. So yeah, yeah so yeah. I can see them definitely doing that as well mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why they would throw out the Amiibo costumes because that was like one of the most standout features. Yeah, they're of Mario already Maker. done. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you didn't even need the Amiibo to unlock them, by the way. You could just unlock no. them normally. So yeah, I mean, I think that. Also, one thing I've been seeing going around on Twitter a lot is people are complaining about the new look of Bowser. Like, that he's not his original Mario World look, and that he's, like, a redesigned one. The redesigned one looks leagues better. Like, I don't care what anybody says. The redesigned one looks way, 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 way better than the old Mario World design that was, like, green and orange and his face looks too big. Like, I'm actually happy they're going back and redesigning some of those old sprites for this century. <laughs> well, I'm a little shocked. There are people arguing on <clears throat> Twitter... That sounds very unlike Twitter. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> People still. complaining on the internet. Yeah. Uh, no, I agree. Yeah. I totally agree with you. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, you know, because they needed him to match up with Bowser Jr.'s sprite of course, as well. Of and so why would you do... Yeah, so, uh, yeah. And that's the other thing, because, like, when Super Mario World was made, we didn't really have the characters quite as established as we do now with their look. Yeah. So it'd be very strange to go back and be like, oh, whoa, that's a weird-looking Bowser, and, you know, so it wouldn't... Yeah. I don't think it would work. So, yeah, I agree. And, you, and you, know this, you know this about me, too, is I've never been a big, like, 2D Mario fan, right. which never have been. Mm -hmm. I love the Mario aesthetic, right? I love the characters. Piranha Plant's my main in Smash Brothers. I mean, <laughs> I like all the spin-off games. Well, some of the spin-off games, <laughs> but like I, I just I've never been the biggest Mario fan in the world. I love the 3D ones, but the 2D ones just never really grabbed me. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, I loved the original Mario Maker because for me, some people really like that game because of the super challenging levels that you put together. But for me, the things I like about the game are the same things that I like about Animal Crossing. It was customizing things to be themed a certain way. Like I loved your Wind Waker level that you made back in the day <laughs> for the original Mario Maker. That's the kind of stuff that I'm looking forward to in Mario Maker too. Yeah, it's just that it's like a platform where you can really be creative and come up with things yeah. that nobody would have even maybe thought you could do. Yeah. And I think that's I'm looking it. forward. I'm looking forward to seeing my fans make me little uh, anime-themed <laughs> levels for me to play through <laughs> on live streams. I think that'll be a lot of fun. Oh, and you know, you mentioned that. Um, so I remember with the original Super Mario Maker, they had these like brand deals they were doing with like Japanese oh, yeah. magazines. And yep. uh, I think there was, I, you said anime and it, that's what made me remind, remember it. I think there were like a couple anime characters they just randomly added into it. I can't remember yeah. who they were. The, but... girl, uh, the girl from Nisekoi was in there. Squid Girl was in there. There <laughs> yeah, were a couple yeah. other ones. Yeah. Sean the Sheep was in there. Yeah, enough. yeah. So it'd be interesting to see. My if... favorite anime, Sean the Sheep. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I mean, I want to see uh, like, you know, if they were to add, they did like the SpongeBob thing in Splatoon. I want to yeah. see like SpongeBob and Super Mario Maker Two for some reason or something. I, you know what? My uh, my dream pick is Ronald McDonald. I want them to do Ronald <laughs> okay. McDonald and Colonel Sanders. Those two would be great. I think those are big characters in Japan. So I know they do. I be... believe me. I walked by a lot of McDonald's and KFC. And <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, Super Mario Maker Two. That's cool. Yeah, um, super cool. This might be where we actually have some 
some minor disagreements on this game. Oh, Fire Emblem talk? <laughs> uh, we'll get to that. <laughs> hey, wasn't that delayed? Somebody, I read a comment today. Somebody said it was delayed. It was delayed a while ago, yeah, but it's still coming out in July. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Uh, no, I, was, I don't think they ever technically gave it a release date. They just said 2019, or they said spring 2019 or something, and now it's summer. But um, since they've announced the release date, no, it hasn't gotten delayed. Okay. Um, but no, I was going to move on to uh, Luigi's Mansion 3. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Which Let's is, go. Um, so for those of you who might not know, I love the original Luigi's Mansion. It's like one of my favorite Nintendo games. I just love the aesthetic, the atmosphere. I love the gameplay. Um, they really knocked it out of the park. They nailed the Halloween vibe that I want out of a game. Mm. I'm not a fan of Dark Moon on the 3DS. Uh, it's just a totally different art style. The pacing is different. I think the puzzle solving is not as clever as people remember. Mm. And the total lack of portrait ghosts is like the craziest, dumbest oversight I have seen yeah, in that, any Nintendo game. That's to me the biggest problem with Dark Moon. It actually is not with the game itself. I enjoyed the game mechanics. And I think we've talked about this on a bunch of other discussions before. Mm. I like the, the core mechanics of the game. It's just like getting rid of the portrait ghost designs and Shocking. replacing all the different ghosts with like the same generic ones really was a bummer to me. And so yeah. I hope they don't go in the same direction with this one, but that's really my only concern because it doesn't really seem like there's going to be multiple mansions. It looks like they're focusing on that one big hotel right. based on that initial trip. Excuse me, that initial trailer that we got. So um, I'm hoping that they just sort of put together one really cohesive, fun uh, hotel to explore. And then they really just build upon the ghost that they had in Dark Moon, but also add in the portrait ghost and stuff from the first game. And I think we could be looking at a really great Luigi's Mansion if that's the case. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to totally give up. I'm, I, you know, I'm a stickler for Halloween, so maybe I'm more picky than others. In fact, I'd be willing to bet I probably am a little bit more picky yeah, with Halloween yeah. aesthetic. Um also, Josh being pessimistic? Wow, this is new. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I just said I love Super Mario Maker 2 I'm, and Animal I'm Crossing. Teasing, I'm teasing you. I'm teasing you. Um, no, but um, it's, uh, I mean, they need the they need Portrait Ghost. That's the first thing. Yeah. If this doesn't have Portrait Ghost, I'm already, like, tuning out. Because I don't know why you would do that. It's a, it's a game about ghosts. That was, like, the yeah. one thing they should have taken away from the original game is, oh, it's about these cool Mario-looking ghosts. And they didn't do that. And I hated their basic ghosts. Um, but just to actually step away from Dark Moon, though, and look directly at Luigi's Mansion 3, um, first thing I need to see when I see that game again at E3 is it needs to be darker. Turn off the damn lights. It's supposed <laughs> to be a haunted mansion hotel type game. Right. The, the, the preview footage was so bright. I don't... Luigi's walking around... Okay, so here's... Oh, boy, I'm going to get in a rant here, Roger. <laughs> uh, let's hear it. All right. All right. I'm okay. buckled in. Okay, so Luigi has a flashlight in the first game, not just because it looks cute to see him hunched behind a flashlight. He has that because it is a part of the gameplay. It allows you to see things because the rooms are so dark and spooky. It, it is a functional part of playing the game. You need it. In the footage we've seen for Luigi's Mansion 3, you can see everything in the room, yet Luigi is still looking scared behind his flashlight. What's the point of the flashlight? It's like Next Level Games thinks the flashlight is just there because it looks cute, but it's like, no, no, no. Flashlight serves a purpose, and your rooms are too bright. So I really hope they turn the damn lights off to make it spooky. The other thing, I hate the, t the lack of texture detail in Luigi's Mansion 3 so far. The first mm -hmm. game was really kind of known for being a bit more gritty than what we'd seen in Mario games. It wasn't those bright, bold colors. It had like a dirtiness to it, which is what you want in a Halloween game. You want it to look old and vintage-y. Yet in Luigi's Mansion 3, it just looks so like plasticky and polished and lacking mm. detail. I really hope they go back in and, and change up the style of it and put some detail in textures. But other than that, I mean, like, I know this studio is really well known for animation. I I'm a big fan of what they do with animation. Oh, I'm yeah. Just, I mean, look I'm, at the punch out games. Yeah, yeah. Those look great. I mean, yeah, that's their best example of animation right there. Um, but I'm just, I want to be proven wrong. Like, I really want to yeah. see this at E3 and just be like, oh my God, there's Portrait Ghost and it's darker and it looks a little grittier. That that will be so exciting. Um, but I don't know, like Luigi Mansion 3, I think a lot of people are kind of on board with that already. And I'm just kind of, because of their past work, I'm really like suspicious of what they'll do with mm -hmm. this. So we'll see. But uh, I don't know. I'm in, I'm in agreement with you that I do want them to like turn the lights down a little bit. I think it'd be better right. if it was darker. Right. 
Uh, but I actually do really like the look of the game. I, I like that everything looks really clean. Uh, this is something that actually I'm sort of in the minority here when it comes to Pokemon Sword and Shield is the look of that game. It's going back to sort of what they had with Sun and Moon where the characters all had outlines. And one thing I really liked about Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee was that those games looked very clean. There were no outlines. It was just these really clear, very clean, very simple but saturated 3D models. And that's what I like about the trailer from Luigi's Mansion, but I agree, I think it is a little too bright. And if they want to sort of up the spooky factor, all they really need to do is turn down the lights. Right. Yeah, yeah. I think a great example of a recent game that looks really good, but it also has that simple, saturated look, and it's something that I actually didn't get around to playing until a couple months ago, was Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. That game, yeah. Josh, sort of side tangent, that <laughs> game is probably one of the best games on Switch. It that is. game is so good. Have you totally beaten it yet? Um, I have, yeah. So the reason I brought this up real quick, a little bit of a segue, is because my prediction for this E3, I think one of the surprise games we're going to get is a sequel to Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle, and I think it will be releasing this fall. Okay, okay. Um, so it will be that you're gonna, they're going to stick with Super Mario, they're not going to like go invade another Nintendo world? No, I think it's going to be a Mario and Rabbids sequel, and I think it's going to have... Um, maybe some other Mario characters as the partners now. Maybe like Daisy will be your partner or Wario or something. Mm -hmm. But I think it's it's going to build off the formula that already clearly worked for them. Um, and I think they're just going to build it in the same engine so they could just turn out the same thing. You know, two years later, they already did the DLC, which was awesome with Donkey Kong. I don't know if you played that DLC. It was also great. I have complete faith in that entire development team now. I think <laughs> the music that was made by Grant Kirkhope was also fantastic. One of the best Nintendo soundtracks in the past few years. Really enjoy it. And uh, I really do feel like they're going to be making a sequel to that game. And I think that's going to be a big surprise to a lot of people at this E3. I really do think we're going to get a Mario and Rabbids sequel. Yeah, I mean, that game, it was, like, for me, I think that's in my top five Switch games right now. because It's, it's great. It's yeah. built from the ground up for the Switch. It's available nowhere else. It was a totally new idea. It looks great. Plays great. Um, so, yeah, I would love a sequel to that. It's probably top five for me, too, when I'm thinking about it. It's, okay. It's close. If it's not top five, it's, like, real close to the top five. Okay. Um, do you get, do you get like, Fire Emblem vibes from it? Is that why you like it? Well, I just like the strategy aspect, but I also really do like the humor, which is something yeah. that I never thought I would say about a Rabbids game, because <laughs> the Rabbids humor is very much like the Minions humor, and to me, it's just, it's never been funny to me. Okay. Um, but I, I do like it in that game, and I like the way that they sort of mash together these Mario characters and the Rabbit characters. I liked the P.D. Piranha Rabbit boss, and I liked the, the Kong opera singing boss. The Donkey Kong Rabbit was super funny. Yeah, I just I liked what they did with that game, and mm -hmm. I'm completely on board for more of it. Yeah, I'm, uh, I've been a Rabbids fan since, like, the launch of the Wii. I, oh, I, I know. I remember, I remember back in the day before we were even friends, I remember watching your playthrough of Rabbids Go Home on the Wii. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm on board with Rabbids. Yeah, I think they're funny and cute. Yeah. I think oh, yeah. there is. Yeah. I, I totally get the Minions uh, relation yeah. they'd make, um, but I feel like they're cuter than Minions. <laughs> I, I hate that. They are. They are. Yeah. <laughs> um, Okay. By the way, side note, Minions are super popular in Japan. I, there was he, Minion stuff everywhere oh when I went. Well, Universal Studios in Japan has a Minion park. It's like a no, big know. land with Minions, which is <laughs> yep. scary. It sounds nightmarish. Um, okay, so are there any games that we kind of like know are going to be announced before we totally get into our predictions? Uh, yeah, so I mean, we didn't really talk about Fire Emblem. And I, I, we won't because I know you really don't <laughs> like it, but I love it. Hey, uh, no, wait a minute. When you're in Japan, I specifically sent you a message on Instagram saying I like Fire Emblem now. Did you forget? <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> but, uh, no, I, I really do. I, I'm looking forward to Three Houses. I know some people really do have their complaints about it, which is fair. Uh, but to me, I've, I've really been waiting for that next mainline Fire Emblem game. It's something I'm really looking forward to playing through on my channel. I think that's just going to be a lot of fun to, uh, to stream a playthrough of that game. Hard mode, where, you know, if a character dies, they ain't coming back. I'm currently playing through on my Game Boy Micro that I picked up in Japan. I'm playing through the original Fire Emblem that was on Game Boy Advance. Really enjoying it. Uh, and I liked Fates and I liked Awakening. I know everybody pretty much likes Awakening. Some people have mixed feelings on Fates, but... Honestly, Fire Emblem has been great to me in the past few years, and I really do have a good feeling about this. I love the main theme of the game, and it's coming out really soon. So I'm looking forward to maybe seeing just a little bit more about it, but I don't really, if there's like a story trailer or something, I don't really want to watch it because I don't want to be spoiled on anything. Um, so Three Houses is great. Astral Chain is another one we talked about very briefly yeah. at the beginning of this. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot more of that. I honestly thought that was going to be a Monolith Soft game before they showed that Platinum's developing it, but... Um, 
I mean, Platinum's made great games in the past, so I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing what they're doing with this new IP. Always great to see a new IP from Nintendo and uh, and from Platinum, so that'll be really great. Uh, but ultimately, the only like other game that I'm thinking of right now that's already been announced before we get into unannounced stuff is Link's Awakening. Right. We didn't really talk about Link's Awakening. Uh, I've always liked Link's Awakening, but I've always thought it was kind of overrated because I got into it uh, really, really late. And so I played through it and I thought it was fun and I enjoyed the humor of it. But at the same time, I was like, really? This is some people's favorite Zelda game? Like, <sighs> So I think that is a game that absolutely needs a remake. And, uh, and based on everything that we've seen of the game so far, it looks really cute. Mm -hmm. I'm digging the art style. I really do like it a lot. It looks very clean. Uh, again, very saturated colors. Like that's the same thing we were talking about earlier. Uh, I just I'm looking forward to replaying it, and I'm excited to see how they're going to bring this uh, into the modern age. Yeah. So it's funny. Um, there's only a few uh, Zelda games I've not played, and they're all like on handheld. So right. I'm really excited to play this because it's it's going to be like a totally new game for me. I've never I have no I, all I know is that it's like one of the more weirder Zelda games. I feel like you're and... if you've never played it before, you are really going to love this one. Okay, and yeah. you know me, you know how I like, like and I know you. stuff. Yeah, yeah, I feel so... like you're really going to like it. Okay, it's cool. got kind of Captain Rainbow vibes with some of the things. I, yeah, I was gonna I, mean, I was gonna draw I, yeah. some comparisons there with the like island yeah. and and stuff. Um, yeah, I like the art style too. I totally get. Uh, like Arlo did a video I was watching a while ago where he's mentioning like he, he wonders, you know, what it would look like if they made it look more natural and you couldn't mm. tell that it was on a grid and stuff. And I totally get that. And I agree. Like, it'd be interesting. But I still just think this game looks so cute and getting clean. And I like the art style of it. I'm also a huge fan of top down Zelda games. So mm. I think it's really great that Nintendo kind of keeps the, the big epic 3D Zelda adventures but they also keep the you know top down Zeldas. They seem pretty consistent with both styles. So yeah, yeah. I'm just really excited to play this game, and I, I can't wait to see a trailer. Like because again, I have no real reference for what's in this game other than right. a chain chomp and some goombas. Uh, and see, it and for me, it's funny because because it, like for me, when I'm looking forward to the trailer, obviously having already played the game, I'm looking forward to seeing what they're going to show off, like mm -hmm. what new things are being redesigned, and you know what some of these bosses look like in HD. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. But yeah, for you, it, you've never played it before, so you're going to see all this weird, wacky stuff, and you're going to be like, wait, 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 is this real? <laughs> like, there's one boss in particular I'm thinking of late in the game that I won't spoil for you, mm -hmm. but. I think it would maybe be in their best interest to show that at E3 because it is so weird and random and out of place that you're <laughs> going to be like, what the heck? <laughs> well, I'm excited now. Yeah, um, yeah. One of the things that I would say I'd love to see in that game, I know it won't happen because it doesn't really make sense because it's, you know, like a remastered. Um, I love multiplayer top-down Zelda. It's so fun to me. Like Zelda, oh, yeah. um, uh, Legend of Zelda, why can't I think of the name of it? It's my, one of my second favorite. Uh, the adventure one on the GameCube. You know which one I'm talking oh, about. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Four Swords. Four Swords. Of... Why in the hey. world did I draw a blank on that? I don't know. I don't know. Um, but that's like one of my favorite Zelda games. So I'd love to see them just be like, hey, it's a remastered version. So we added this little multiplayer battle mode in here. Um, again, I don't expect that. I'm not going to be disappointed if it's not in there. But I just feel like, well, this is a good opportunity to try that maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is a new Zelda game coming out this year. It's not as big yeah. as Breath of the Wild, but it looks pretty darn cool to me. Um, so yeah, I think, and then, you know, we talked about Pokemon a bit. You mentioned you think that, you know, they'll do their own thing around E3. Do you think yeah, I really do. do I'm expecting a, E3? Yeah, before? I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be about a week before. Because okay. usually that's what happens because, uh, Koro Koro sometimes leaks, like that Japanese magazine leaks before E3 too. Yep. And usually the magazine has the same stuff that's going to be in the direct. Um, so I really do think like the week before E3 or maybe the first day of the week of E3, we're going to get a Pokemon direct, but it'll be before the Nintendo direct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I think that allows us to, we're pretty much at the 30 minute mark or so. That's a good time to yeah. transition into what we would predict Nintendo is going to go with. So I think what we should do is let's go with three game predictions. Okay. Not including the Mario Rabbits thing I brought up earlier? Because that no, was one okay, of my big yeah, killers. Well, if you want to include that, we can. If you can't think okay. of more. But if you can okay. think of more, then we'll just go on. I mean, I can, I can always think of more. This is the guy who came up with, you know, <laughs> lots of other weird things in the past. Water <laughs> being in Smash Bros. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Time out. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. I know where we didn't talk about Smash Bros. That's at, true. At E3. Okay. Uh, here's my prediction. I think that rumor about the Dragon Quest character is true. Okay. I think that's true. And I think what they're going to do is because obviously it's a big deal to Japan, but it's not really that big of a deal to North America. I think what they're going to do is they're going to stealth drop the trailer and the character 
on the first day of E3. Because if you look at the timing of when Joker was released uh, back in April, and then you look at if a character is going to get released in June, and you look at when they're ending the Challenger pack in February, it seems to sort of line up with that, that we would be getting a character from, um, you know, like this, the Challenger pack, that second character during E3. Okay. So what I think is going to happen is I think at the beginning of the Nintendo Direct, during E3, we're going to get the trailer for that Dragon Quest character and the announcement that the new version of the game and the Dragon Quest character and his stage will be added the day of E3. And then they'll show off somebody playing him during the Invitational that's going to be happening during uh, that – it's like the stage show thing or whatever they're doing with like Splatoon 2 and, and Smash Bros. Uh -huh. So I think that's going to happen. But then I think at the end of the Direct, we're going to see a surprise trailer for the third character – that will be out at the end of summer, early fall. That's my guess. And my guess for that character, because obviously it's E3 time. We got to go bonkers with our predictions. <laughs> okay. Uh, after Joker, I feel like anything is possible. I truly believe Banjo-Kazooie is going to be that character. I think we're going to get a Banjo-Kazooie surprise announcement that's going to melt down everybody's faces at E3. And, uh, and that that'll be coming out in like early fall, late summer. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it seems... So when it comes to Microsoft-owned characters, a lot of people kind of go around about three of them. There's Banjo-Kazooie, there's, oddly enough, Steve from Minecraft, and then right. Master Chief. Um, Master now, Chief here's the thing. Like the here's the thing, Josh. Likely. I'll say this right now. Okay. Because you're leaving out my favorite character, which is the character I'd rather have above Banjo-Kazooie or Master Chief or Steve. And because his game is on Switch... And Microsoft oh. actually went out of their way to put the game on Switch. I'm telling – and they have Echo Fighters. Bro, please, please, Sakurai. I know it's not going to happen, but please put Cuphead in the game. Make Mugman his Echo Fighter. Have you played Cuphead yet, Josh? I know you would love this game. I haven't played it yet. You got it. It's like 20 bucks. Download it on the Switch. It's so good. I was playing it on the plane and on the Shinkansen in between Osaka and Tokyo. I am such a big proponent for this game. I love, 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 love Cuphead. I love it. It's one of my favorite games of the past decade, and uh, I just feel like the whole old classic animated aesthetic is something that you'd love. It's very challenging, so maybe you'd be frustrated by it, but I think if you stick with it, you'd really like it. So, um, You were playing Cuphead in Japanese, I noticed. I was. You I downloaded was, yeah. it in Japanese as well? Well, so I, I downloaded it, but it has all the languages in the game. Oh, okay. I switched I out of the menu, so I, I was see. like, well, I know this game, and there's not a lot of text in the game, so I'm just <laughs> yeah. going to switch to the Japanese language, and it was fun. <laughs> okay. Um... So, yeah, I mean, that's the weird thing. When it comes to Banjo-Kazooie being in Smash Brothers, it's like our generation gets it, and we're like, oh, yeah, it's Banjo-Kazooie. But then I also wonder if it's like, is that just an us thing? Because Banjo is not relevant anymore. Uh, is King K. Rool relevant, Josh? Well, he's relevant in the way that is he's Is Simon been... Belmont relevant, Josh? Well, Simon's been in... They've been in games, though, in the last 10 years. The like, last thing King K. Rool was in was, like, that baseball game on GameCube. And the last thing Simon Belmont in... was in was the fighting game on Wii. So I feel like... Well, the, King K. Rool has been in Mario Baseball on the Wii. He's been in the... He was the boss in that Donkey Kong King of Swing game. Oh, I guess he was he in was, that. He was a racer oh, wait, wait, in Donkey Kong wasn't Barrel the, Blast. Wasn't the boss in King of Swing like a banana alien or something? Well, he was one of the bosses. He's in King of Swing, oh, okay. I remember, okay. at some okay. point. Um, so, I, yeah, I mean, but, like, Banjo, it's like, I don't... So my prediction is, if Banjo-Kazooie were in Smash Brothers, it's because <laughs> they're making a new Banjo game, mm. and it's going to launch on the Xbox, PC, and the Switch. And that's the deal Nintendo has with Microsoft. Okay, you bring that new Banjo game to the Switch, and we'll put Banjo in Smash Brothers. So it's like I could completely see that happening, too. Considering, you know, Cuphead, Banjo, they're like family-friendly franchises that you could put on the Switch that make sense on the Switch. And Microsoft doesn't have their own handheld. So it's literally, it's not like they're losing consumers. Right. It's free money for them. They're getting a whole new audience. So I could actually see that happening. I could see Microsoft announcing a new Banjo and then having it also be on Switch and then throwing Banjo-Kazooie in there. But I also think that... Sakurai really respects fans. Like, Sakurai knows what fans want. And so I think if he puts Banjo-Kazooie in the game, they're going to look like the N64 versions of themselves and not the blocky version that we saw in Nuts and Bolts. <laughs> I don't think that even I if they make believe... a new Banjo game, I don't think they will ever return to that style. I think that it's been yeah, so damned and cursed yeah. that they know better not to yeah, probably. bring that up to... You're probably right. right. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, it would be... An... I mean, Banjo and Kazooie would be an interesting fighter as well because, you know, Kazooie's in his backpack, so he could have some cool combos going on there. Oh, yeah. Um, 
it would definitely Spiral be one Mountain of those, would be an awesome stage. <laughs> yeah. It would definitely be one of those things that would get people going crazy for E3, which is what exactly. you want. So Exactly. Yep. So we'll see. Yeah. Um, I do think for sure we'll see something in the E3 Direct about Smash Brothers DLC. Uh, I'd imagine it would be a character because they just did the update that added the yep. stage builder in that. So Which is, they... by the way, really fun. I don't know <laughs> if, you, yeah, yeah. if you played the stage builder stuff, but it's really good. There's some really great stages. Somebody made a Ant-Man versus Thanos stage that I think is really funny. Uh, there's just there's a lot of great stages. So Somebody made the battle bus from Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, Somebody... I know you love your Fortnite. Oh, there's a... Hey, there's a prediction, Josh. Do you think we're going to get any more of Fortnite updates for Switch during this E3? <laughs> so it's funny because just, I think, about four nights ago, I finally gave up playing Fortnite on the Switch, and I moved <laughs> to playing it on my laptop. And, <laughs> oh, my God, the difference in frame rate and clarity oh, yeah. is mind-blowing. Oh, graphically, it's way better, of course. Yeah. I mean, just even for me, I don't know if it's me or what, but it plays really bad on the Switch for me. Like, it gets pretty mm -hmm. choppy when there's a lot of mm -hmm. action going down to the point where it's like, okay, I'm playing against people who only only do this nonstop for their life. There's no way I stand a chance at like right. 15 frames a second. Right. Uh, so I recently started playing it on laptop. Um, I know people are going to vomit in their pants when I say, I don't even know how they would do that, uh -oh. but they're going to do it. I would like to see some sort of Nintendo collab in Fortnite. Give me Zero Suit Samus in Fortnite. Give me something Star Fox related in Fortnite. I, I think oh, it'd I'd be, be cool. I'd be fine with that. That'd be fine. They've yeah. got a, uh, this season of Fortnite is like future, the future themed and, and all that. I think that'd be pretty good for Metroid. Just saying. Yeah. Throw, throw like a Zero Suit Samus outfit in there. That'd be yeah. great. Have something to do with, yeah, the ship or whatever. Get like skins of the ship for all the equipment in there. Oh, so. for the glider? Yeah, yeah that'd be cool. Yeah. Like a good ship glider. Yeah. I don't know like why Nintendo wouldn't do that. It'd be cool. And I know some people would be like, oh, Fortnite, but I don't know. No, but Fortnite was like one of the most downloaded games off the eShop yeah. in like Nintendo history. So I feel I feel and like I mean, Nintendo would be okay with that. Just like anything that's huge, you're going to have that cringy, obnoxious side sure. of the audience. And of I think course, a lot of, of people course. are responding to that, like you know, the cringy side of the audience. But it's a you know, it's a game. <laughs> it's that a fun game. It's, it's made fun. its mark in uh, gaming yeah. history. So I think Nintendo, Nintendo, I, you know what? If you're sticking your nose up at Fortnite and Nintendo collab, Nintendo put Super Mario and Peach and Luigi in some sort of realistic basketball game on the GameCube. Okay, okay. So let's not let's not talk bad about NBA Street. <laughs> that game was awesome. But it, but I'm saying like it's just it looked weird as hell, and they did oh, it like looked it, super weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's not pretend like these characters haven't been lent out. I mean, you know, Donkey Kong's in the movie uh, Pixels. So let's not pretend that we haven't had some weird <laughs> partnerships. Um, right. Okay, let's go on to our predictions for real this time. Was was Smash Brothers one of your predictions, or were we just kind of going over? No, no, no. I just, I forgot okay. about Smash, so I wanted yeah, to bring it up. Yeah. Well, I already, I brought up Mario and Rabbids already, and I have two other big ones, okay. but you, you go ahead. That'll okay, count so as one I, of my... I have at least two off the top of my head. Um, okay. So I love Mario sports games. They're one of my favorite things, because I hate sports games, but when you stick some chain chomps and banana peels in there, uh, you got my attention. <laughs> Yep. Um, so it can't be Mario Tennis. We've already got that. Can't be Mario Golf because that's Camelot and they just made Mario Tennis. So I don't think they're ready for a golf game. Uh, it can't be Mario Strikers because that's next level games and they're pretty small and they're making Luigi's Mansion 3. Uh, so that leaves uh, my favorite Mario fran base Mario sports franchise, which is Mario Baseball. Uh, that mm. is made by um, Bandai Namco or just Namco. I don't know what they go by now. Is it Bandai Namco? Bandai Namco. Okay. Yep. So it's made by them. They're a relatively big studio. Uh, oh, yeah. So I think that they really might have a Mario Baseball announcement. It wouldn't be a gigantic game. To me, it would be, and others. But it's not like one of those big, oh, my God, things. It's something they could squeeze in at, like, the end of summer. Like, hey, mm. you know, we're showing it in June. And by the way, it comes out at the end of August or comes out in the beginning of September or something. Um, or maybe it would come out next year. So I don't know. I just feel like a Mario Baseball game seems like a logical Mario sports game that could be worked on right about mm. now. Um, so that is my guess. That is also my hope, just because I want a new one. There's so much fan service in that in those games that it's just so fun. It's simple, yet there's so much strategy they can put in place there. It looks pretty as well, even on the Wii. So I'd love to see an HD Mario Baseball on the Switch. It'd be pretty good. So that's good my call. That's my first prediction. That's a good call. We both both of our first predictions were uh, new Mario games. What a shocker at a Nintendo <laughs> E3 that there'd be new Mario games. Uh, well, the second one is probably not one you'd be excited about, but I can't wait. Uh, so Monolith Soft, the developer behind Xenoblade, uh, they already announced that they're working on a brand new IP. They've been hiring like crazy. Uh, Torna came out last year, which was the final DLC expansion pass for Xenoblade 2. It was amazing. And uh, I really do think that we're going to see a trailer for their upcoming game 
at this E3. I think this is going to be one of those few games that is not going to come out in 2019, but that we are going to see at this year's E3. Uh, the timing just seems right. Uh, we know that we've been they've been working on this new IP for a while now. It's got, like I think, a medieval feel to it. There was a girl that looks like a knight in this really cool, expansive, open world. And I would love to see more about that title. Monolith Soft really is, I think, one of the best developers under Nintendo. Uh, not only do they do a great job with their RPG franchises like Xenoblade, but they also do great work in the background on things like The Legend of Zelda and Splatoon and Smash Brothers. They've worked on pretty much every big franchise doing cleanup for Nintendo while making their own really fantastic AAA RPG games. And so again, I know you're not a big RPG fan, but I am truly looking forward to whatever Monolith Soft is going to be making. And I do think that we are going to see that at this E3. Okay, okay. Uh, I think <laughs> their name's also in the credits for Star Fox Zero, by the way. Just want to that uh, is it? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're not there. I'm gonna go look. I mean, I'm wait, sure what? Star what is Star Fox Zero? I don't know what I'm talking about. Never mind. Yeah, we don't talk about that. Game. That's fine. <laughs> Um, so my other prediction, I'm trying to see, so my predictions, I'm trying to think of games that would not necessarily be huge first party Nintendo things because of the fact that we already know a lot. And they did say this year is what they're focusing which is on. Why, which is why I was thinking Monolith Soft 2, because right, it's right. something that obviously is a big deal to me. Mm -hmm. And Xenoblade has, over the past couple of years, become a much bigger franchise for Nintendo. But it's still, I'd say Xenoblade now is where Fire Emblem was during like the GameCube, Game Boy Advance era. Okay. Where it's, it's kind of a niche audience. Fire Emblem, I feel now, is sort of raised among the ranks of like really one of their big name franchises. And I feel like Xenoblade has taken the old Fire Emblem spot. So to, to me, like... A Monolith Soft announcement is something on the level of what a Fire Emblem announcement would have been during like E3 2004 or 2005. Okay, okay. Um, so with that in mind, I think, and given the delay of Metroid Prime 4, I think Nintendo will bring over the Metroid Prime trilogy remastered or HD or whatever it was called. Um, so it, my prediction on it, though, will be that it isn't going to be drastically altered from what we saw in the Wii. Uh, the Wii mm. got the collection of the three games in one disc. I think they're going to take that. They're going to port it over to the Switch. They might do a little bit of cleanup. It'll obviously be in HD, which it wasn't on the Wii. Oh, yeah. Um, yep. So that'll be cool. But So I don't think it's going to be like they totally remaster those games from the ground up. I think it's just going to be, we took that collection. It's in HD now. Polished up a few little things here and there. And it's 60 bucks, you know. And that's the type of thing that will get people excited. It'll hold this over until Metroid Prime 4, which I'm guessing will be like 2022. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, I think that would be a good thing to kind of announce, especially at this time, since, you know, they did delay Metroid Prime 4. Basically, they, you know, they canceled it and restarted all over. So Which be... I just got to say, I don't think we ever talked about that in a discussion. Mm -hmm. That was unprecedented. I cannot remember the last time that Nintendo did that. <laughs> but I also want to give kudos for Nintendo for actually pulling it. They realized, okay, this is not good. We need to start this from scratch. I would much rather have a great Metroid Prime game that lives up to the, you know, the, the Metroid Prime name and have it come out two years from now than have a bad game come out that tarnishes the name forever. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, and the fact, I mean, we've got Retro Studios working on it now. That's kind of what exactly. we all wanted. That's what we, we wanted need. that. Yeah. So we got what exactly. we wanted in the end. It's kind of funny, though. Like, if it was so bad that they actually canceled it, how bad was it? Because they released the Animal Crossing it. Amiibo Festival. <laughs> so we also it, know, what game is that? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't so. know either. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's my prediction. I think that those they'll games, do a collection. Those games were Thanos snapped out of existence. All right. Okay. <laughs> I, I, okay. I think I barely get that reference, but <laughs> Thanos is the purple guy. That's mean. It's funny because you saying I get that reference is also a reference and the people in your comment section will understand. So <laughs> okay. it's great. So it's now it's time for your second prediction. Well, uh, here's the thing. All right. I already said my second prediction, which is Monolith Soft. Okay. And I said Mario Rabbits before. But I, I do know of two other games that I do want to talk about here. And this next game I want to bring up is something that nobody is talking about or even thinking about, I think. And this is a game franchise that maybe would be better suited to mobile, but we know what Nintendo's doing on mobile for the next couple years. We know Mario Kart Tour is getting a beta release. We know they just recently announced DNA and Pokemon Company are working together on something. Uh, Dragalia has been a pretty big hit, and so was Fire Emblem Heroes. I think they're still building upon those games. So I really don't think this is going to come to mobile. This seems to me like a game that they could have been working on quietly in the background that hits that casual audience that could also release this holiday pretty easily. Uh, that's Nintendogs. 
Ooh. I actually genuinely think we're going to see a new Nintendogs at E3, or um, at the very least see the announcement that the franchise is coming back, and then maybe uh, get the announcement that it's releasing this holiday season. Even if there's not like a de definite release date, and I also don't think it's going to be something they're really going to focus on, I think we will see a Nintendogs game announced at this E3. Um, you know me, I freaking love Nintendogs for whatever reason. I, I don't know, it's so charming and fun. It's very casual and relaxing. And I think since, like, the original game, I've wanted to see what they could look like on a TV with, like, beautiful fur shaders and stuff. And yeah. with the motion controls of, like, the, the Joy-Cons, you can do a lot of stuff, like throw the Frisbee and scrub them up and stuff. And so I think it's, it's weird that we haven't had motion controlled Nintendogs yet. I think it'd be right? a great fit for the Switch. I agree. Um, also, by the way, I mean, if you think about it, there might be some fun things they could do with the camera on the Joy-Con with Nintendogs to where it recognizes you or recognizes what you're doing. Um, so you, know, you just kind of pet with your hand or something. I don't know. That well, I, was, I mean, I was literally thinking of Labo VR. Is they add <laughs> okay. Labo VR support to Breath of the Wild and to um, Mario Odyssey. And I feel like they might as well. I mean, it's there now. Use it. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna use it for other things, maybe other people will buy it. I actually saw, weirdly enough, I saw so many Labo VR commercials in Japan. It was crazy, and I saw people buying them in stores in Japan. That were like they were very popular. So I don't know what it is with Japan and Labo VR. You would think because like on the average, apartments are smaller there that people wouldn't want all these big bulky things. But um, no, I mean Labo VR was pretty popular based on what I saw, and I do think Labo VR and Nintendo Dogs would be something that makes a lot of sense. Of course, I would much rather see something like Pokemon Snap 2, uh, but I think that Nintendogs is just something that would be an easier pull. And knowing, you know, all the things that they're talking about with trying to, you know, really sell a lot of Switches this year, they obviously did a really great job last year. Switch has been this enormous success with Smash Brothers. I think if they really want to go over the edge this year, this is already going to be a good year for them with Zelda and Mario Maker and Pokemon. I mean, for God's sakes, Pokemon is going to sell a bunch of units. I think one of those other audiences that they haven't really hit yet is that casual audience from the Wii. Yeah. Um, you know, so back in the day, the Wii, obviously Switch is a huge success now and everybody's talking about it. But really, if you go back and you look at the sales figures during the Wii and DS era, it's like, and you look at the sales figures for Switch, I mean, they were selling gangbusters of the DS and the Wii. Mm -hmm. So if they want to really hit that core market, they're going to need something that hits that casual demographic. And I do think Nintendogs could be that game. Especially more so than like a, a casual sports game, like a Joy-Con Sports Resort or something like that. I, I do think Nintendogs is sort of an untapped franchise. And it's not like they've forgotten about it. I mean, Nintendogs have been an assist trophy. It was one of the best-selling games on 3DS. It was one of the best-selling games on DS. I just think the time is right. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the thing about that franchise. It's not necessarily something they think, oh, we got to constantly keep up with it. I think exactly. they kind of wait for the right gimmick, for lack of a better term, to yeah, come yeah. around and be like, oh, yeah, this could take Nintendogs into a new interesting direction. Let's do it. And that's, yeah. a, Mr. Mi that's a Mr. Miyamoto project, really. He's, you know, the Nintendogs guy. So I think it just has to spark Mr. Miyamoto to get into uh, making it. So yeah. it seems yeah. like the type of... VR seems like it'd be something Mr. Miyamoto would want to play around with. for Exactly. Um, so, yeah, I think that would work. Also, Nintendogs is not necessarily a really visually intense game, which is what you want out of Labo VR, because right. obviously the Switch is not as powerful as a typical machine running VR, and right. VR on the Switch is not the resolution that a typical you know one would be. So the more simple you keep the game, the better the VR experience is going to come across. Whereas yep. um, you know Breath of the Wild, I don't know if you tried it. I'll be honest, I haven't, but I've heard from a lot of people that have, and they're like, oh my god, it's like uh, GameCube resolution, like it's really low resolution. To yeah, play. I've actually I've heard that from a lot of people too though but make sure that your motion control camera is on because a lot of people have put it in and tried it and they were like why isn't this working for me it's because you have to actually go into the settings it's not it doesn't just automatically turn on motion camera mm -hmm. uh, when you slot in the vr you have to actually have to go in there and set it as on uh before you do the labo vr thing okay which is weird so i'm gonna pick up labo vr when it goes down to being 20 30 dollars like the rest of them are yeah yeah i actually i really enjoyed the vehicle kit i thought that was a lot of fun uh -huh. and i still want to do more streams of building the labo because to me those just make for fun streams like mm -hmm. when people are watching you building it and you're interacting with your fans and then at the end of the whole stream you actually have something finished and then you play a little goofy mini game and you're done with it i feel like the best the best way to experience labo it seems like it was kind of made for streamers and youtubers <laughs> um so uh I don't really have a third prediction so much. Really? Because there's one big game I'm thinking of that we haven't talked about at all. And it's one that I would know? Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> I've, you know what? I've given up hope, Roger. I'm a dead. Really? I'm you dead have. inside with wow. that. I wow. just, you know, at a certain point, you have to give up hope for, so that you're not in pain anymore. Um, wow. Okay. All right. But I mean, we can talk about it. Sure. Pikmin. 4. I mean, this seems. I mean, kind of seems like the year. Pikmin seems like one of those franchises, along with Nintendo Dogs and a Monolith Soft game, <laughs> and like a Prime Trilogy re-release. That seems like something that they could easily have out this year, considering that was announced when Mario Odyssey was announced. All the Even way back before, before the Nintendo Switch thing, back when we knew this thing is the NX. Yeah. So I feel like um, now might be the time. I mean, for me, f five years was the time. Five right, years right. ago. But um, they needed to make Pikmin 3DS, Josh. So. Oh, yes. Hey, Pikmin. We don't talk about... All right, you know what? Now I'm going to use that card. We don't talk about <laughs> that game. What's that game, Roger? We don't know what that is. All right, all right. <laughs> I'll hand um, you the Infinity Gauntlet so you could snap it out of existence. Okay. There. Boom, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> um... I mean, yeah, I, you know, I want to just record myself saying Pikmin 4 and then just hit play on it every time we do discussion when we're talking about right. predictions. Right. Um, but I mean, it's, I, you know, I almost feel like it's not logical at this point, as weird as that sounds. I feel like we've gotten into this point where it's not the right time for Pikmin 4 now, which probably means it will be shown. Because right. I'm exactly. thinking it won't be. So now exactly. it'll be shown. Um, I mean, I don't think it would come out this year. If, like, when? Oh, I do. I think it'd be a big fall game. With Luigi's yeah. Mansion? Yeah, yeah. I think looking at this release schedule, we've got Mario Maker in June, Fire Emblem Three Houses in July. Do we know what's coming in August? Do we know what's coming in September? October's probably Pokemon. We don't really know November or December. One of those is probably Link's Awakening. Luigi's and Mansion the other one's me. probably... I feel like Animal Crossing might be... No, I feel like Animal Crossing's like end of the year. I feel like yeah, Animal November Crossing's going to be November or December too. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Well, this, I is, feel a like good, this is a good thing to kind of... in like the late summer, early fall. Yeah, this is a good thing to kind of end the discussion with really is sort of placing where these things are going to launch that we know of so far and then deciding right. like where is their room. So that that's kind of what I've been thinking about. Isn't that about. a good problem to have though too? It is, is a I good problem, like yeah. It feels like the first year of the Switch as well. Like I obviously was very happy with Switch last year because of Pokemon and Smash Brothers. It was like that was a year that was sort of tailored and uh, Xenoblade uh, DLC expansion that ended up being like a full game. Like that stuff to me, obviously, those are all my favorite things. The World Ends With You remake. It's like last year Nintendo was like, all right, this needs to be Roger's year. Like let's make a bunch <laughs> of stuff that he wants that nobody else really cares about. I mean, people care about Smash and Pokemon, let's be real. But like World Ends With You remake, I don't know a lot of the people that were clamoring for that. Um, <laughs> And it does feel like this year feels more like the first year of the Switch, where it was like every single month we were getting a game, and then those games were being built upon with new expansions for Splatoon 2 and ARMS and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, I do feel like this year is going to be a blowout. Oh, you know what? I think I do have a prediction, actually. Okay. Um, I am going to say we see something from Mario Party. I don't know if it oh, would really? be... I don't know if it would be DLC, but that game hasn't even been out a year yet, so it could be DLC. Maybe they'll announce some Super Mario Party DLC because I know a lot of people have been asking for it. And that game sold very well too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and there's only four boards, which is unreasonably low. So it's real fun though. I gotta say, well, as somebody who does not like Mario Party all that much, I think we did talk about this on at least one discussion. We, yeah. Um, and I in person really like, talked about and this. And in person, we talked about this too. Yeah, when I was visiting you at Halloween. Uh, yeah, Super Mario Party is great, man. I really have had a lot of fun with that game. <coughs> Huh. I'll, I'll respectfully disagree on that. I know, that's fine. We can. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, I mean, I think spicing that up with some DLC or doing what they used to do, which is like, hey, every year there's a new Mario Party. Here you go. Here's a new one. I almost would, I would like that, actually. If they're just like, hey, here's Super Mario Party 2. I'd be like, okay, let's see if you fix the things I didn't like in that last one. Um, yeah. I miss, yeah, I miss yearly Mario Parties, as stupid as that might sound to people. Um, so if they did that, but I feel like that's a, that's a possibility. DLC, that's, yeah, like DLC, I think is what I'd lean more on. Because yeah. you don't have to like rebuild a new game. And it hasn't been that long since the game launched to where I do think you're still in that window of DLC. Super Mario Odyssey, I think, is out of the window of DLC. That I mean, yeah. that's not getting DLC, I don't think. No, no. Um, I, I will say this. Uh, obviously, this is poised to be a really big E3 for Nintendo. And yeah. with Sony not being at E3, Microsoft doing their thing at the LA Theater, it's kind of like their show to lose. And they've got so much other really good stuff, but I also feel like thinking about this year and then thinking about the potential for next year and mm -hmm. thinking about what games they didn't give DLC for, next E3 is going to be bonkers because we're going to have at that point, because I don't think either of us expect Metroid Prime for anything at this E3, right? Oh, God, no. I don't even think okay, they'll yeah, have a teaser. Okay. Cool. I agree. I agree. I think next year there'll be like a big proper trailer for Metroid Prime uh, 4. 
Yeah. And I also think next year we're going to get announcements of a proper sequel for Breath of the Wild and a sequel for Mario Odyssey. I think next year's E3 is going to be insane with Mario, Zelda, and Metroid, and most likely, based on uh, the way that Pokemon Company you know, releases games, a remake of Diamond and Pearl in the Sword and Shield engine. And so with those four games, plus maybe like a second challenger pack for Smash Brothers, man, next year might be one of the best E3s in Nintendo history. <laughs> and that's crazy looking into this E3 being like, man, this is poised to be a really great year for them. Yeah, I'm going to throw another one out there for next year while we're doing it. I think Mario Kart for the Switch, an original Mario Kart for the Switch. I be also ready. agree with you. I think they might be doing that. Here's another weird surprise one for E3 2020. Uh, <laughs> I think ARMS 2. I think they're okay. going to do a single gun. That game sold very well. Uh, surprisingly, a lot of people bought that. And obviously it came out at a time where there weren't a lot of games on Switch. So a lot of people bought it because it was like, okay, this is the game that's out there. But I think the development team for ARMS really proved themselves with all the free stuff that they added. And now the game is an awesome package. And I think building upon the lore of that, I think if they added a bunch of new characters and a new story and all this other stuff to it, that could be a small game that not a lot of people see coming, but that could sell really well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we know Super Mario Maker 2 is June. Yes. Well, what did you say is July? Back, bringing it back to 2019. <laughs> <laughs> going back, going back right, to the right. past. Uh, right. So what is July again, you said? July is Fire Emblem. Okay. And then August, we don't know? I think August or September would be the Mario Rabbids game I talked about. Okay, but what That's we know guess. so far, though, like what has been announced, we don't know what's in those, right? No, we don't know August or September. Okay. No. I feel like the Zelda game could be August or September, the uh, Link's Awakening. No, that's holiday. That's definitely well, holiday. Well, you think they're going to put Animal Crossing Pokemon and Link in one holiday in that? Yeah. Smash that why event? not? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Pokemon and Smash Bros. came out the same holiday? Sure, why not? Okay. Uh, and then so we've got... Octo I feel like October is a shoe in for Luigi's Mansion 3. Yes, I, mean, I it's agree. it's a Halloween that. game. How would they miss that? But I also that? kind of think that could be September because they wouldn't yeah. want to be trampled on by Pokemon. But does like, Pokemon, does Pokemon release enough. in November? Yeah. Uh, Pokemon past few, I think, have been in October. Oh, okay. But there have been October some that have been or like, November. Or actually, no, Let's Go was November because I did my playthrough during Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. So I guess that was November. Yeah, so maybe Sword and Shield would be November. October would maybe be Luigi's Luigi. Mansion. December would be Animal Crossing. Early and December Link's. is Animal Crossing, I'm going to say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean it, may, it might even be november for animal crossing because they have in the past like on the 3ds specifically in the same month in november they've put out mario kart ds animal crossing wild world and a mario and luigi game in november Ooh. alone so it's not like it's unprecedented for them to do that maybe they don't do it as much anymore i guess if you looked into it um but i can see you know a lot of people think like no no no, they're not going to put pokemon and animal crossing in the same month i feel like they're so different in terms of the games i don't think they're going to really com they're so giant they're not going to yeah. kill each other yeah yeah People are just going to go get both of those games in that month. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I think that. So, th there are. That leaves like no room, really. Unless, again, they're going to release more than one game a month. That's why yeah, I think. Especially because I could see. I could see maybe August or September being that Metroid Prime trilogy re release. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like summertime, not as many yeah. people buy games in the summer yeah. compared to the fall and the winter. But that's something that obviously is going to hit that core demographic. Everybody's going to download that on their right. Switch. Well, like, yeah, yeah. I think people. There's no, I think even people who are like casual Metroid Prime fans who liked it on the GameCube and maybe even skipped the Wii one might go and download that. So Yeah, I mean, I would. And yeah. I've played, I yeah. own all three games still, but yeah. I like to play them in HD. So I, I own Metroid Prime trilogy on the Wii, uh -huh. and I will still. Absolutely, buy it again for Switch. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, the resolution alone for me is oh, enough. Oh yeah, to like seeing those yeah. games in HD is going to be awesome. Especially playing with like Joy-Con motion control because the motion controls on the Joy Cons I feel are pretty good. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Whoa! I just thought of two things that we okay. completely skipped over. Two like big uh, things that a lot of people talk about that we didn't talk about. One, okay. neither of us are predicting a new Mario RPG type game, whether a Mario and Luigi for Switch or a Paper Mario for Switch. So the reason I don't think that is because I think Paper Mario is probably going to take a little bit more time for them to make. I predict that okay. would be a 2020 type of a thing. Okay. Um, and there's already so many giant games coming out this year that if you throw Paper Mario in there, just be like, holy lord, the boat's going to tip. Yeah. Um, and then as far as uh, Mario and Luigi, you know what? I'm getting a phone call. 
You want to go ahead and finish that sentence for me so I can block this phone call? As far as Mario or Luigi, <laughs> we're probably not seeing that this because year. Because they're making them on the 3DS. They've been doing the ports. Well, they've been remaking 3DS uh, Mario and Luigi games. Yeah, they've been, they've been ports. They haven't been like new Mario and Luigi yeah. games. I feel like Alpha Dream might be making... I mean, you know this. I've never been a big Mario and Luigi fan. I don't I like just, it either, actually. Yeah, I'm not a big never fan. Been I a hate fan. it. I love Paper Mario. I love the aesthetic of Paper Mario, yeah. and I always... Hope for the best when it comes to those games, but then again, past couple games have uh, burned me a little bit. Yeah. So, uh, or a lot, I should say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, I would love, you know, a Paper Mario in the reign of, uh, you know, Thousand Year Door. But I just, I, I think if they're going to make that, I also agree with you. It wouldn't be take ready a little to more see. time. Yeah. 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 Um, and the other fine. one we didn't talk about was uh, Skyward Sword HD remake. Oh yeah, wasn't there some genuine speculation about that? Yeah, as if there was a while like... ago, people were talking about oh, that Skyward Sword was going to get a re-release, and uh, I think it might be weird of them to do that this year because of Link's Awakening, but yeah, I could see yeah. them releasing it next year, uh, maybe even like in the summer of next year after they announce Breath of the Wild 2, because I don't think Breath of the Wild 2 would be ready for next year. I think that's a 2021 game and not necessarily something that's 2020, and that uh, filling in that void for Zelda next year would be the Skyward Sword re-release. Yeah, didn't uh, was this just nonsense or did did Mr. Onuma no? I think that was a say... genuine. I think that was like a genuine thing. I think even Onuma at some concert said something. Maybe oh, I'm no. wrong. Maybe that ended up being proven untrue. But no, what I was gonna say is I thought somebody from Nintendo said they'd like to have a new Zelda game every year or something. Or was that yeah. was that like? So I mean, that would make sense. I mean, that would make sense then because then they could do Link's Awakening this year, Skyward Sword next year, and then finally in 2021, the big Breath of the Wild sequel everybody wants. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, God, the, I, can we just? I, I feel like we rant about this all the time, but like, Breath of the Wild is so dang good, man. It is. That I game still play is, it. It's so. I do too. That game is so good. I was playing it on the plane, um, going to Japan, and I was just thinking, dude, I cannot remember the last time that a Zelda game made me go back to it like this. Like, yeah. I've put in, I think, about two hundred something hours on Breath of the Wild, and I still feel like there's things to discover, and I just have fun walking around the environments. It's, oh. Uh, did you see the the thing that was posted a little while ago on social media of the guy who discovered that if you uh, throw a cuckoo at a boss and then also throw a bomb at the cuckoo and you set off the bomb at the same time the boss hit animation hits the cuckoo, it actually triggers all the cuckoos to attack the boss. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so and I've, always, I've seen people like get the gu giant guardians after like the Hinox and stuff that right, are fighting. Yeah, and right. It's amazing, like the so weird stuff. It's yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. Um, it's funny because I was, uh, sometimes when Dan's here, I'll be playing Breath of the Wild. He'll be doing whatever on his laptop. And he makes fun of the way I play Breath of the Wild, although he also likes this for some reason. I don't even play the game, really. I just walk around and find cute little scenes and take pictures of things. <laughs> so a lot of my time playing Breath of the Wild anymore is just finding cool things and hitting that screenshot button on the Switch. Yeah, and, right, right. Collect. It's almost like Pokemon Snap to me without the Pokemon. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's just so much, there's so many layers to enjoy of Breath of the Wild. I love it. Um, so yeah, it's great. I can't wait for a sequel. I want it to be built in the same engine as well. Like do a Majora's Mask, Ocarina type thing. Yeah, so, yeah. would love it. Um, well, I mean, we're an hour in. I think we've covered most of E3 2019. Um, I think we have. Yeah, yeah, I think we've pretty much covered it. I'm trying to think if there's anything we... Oh, I guess there's one small game that we missed. Um, you might not even remember this game. This is the Game Freak town rpg oh yeah that got yeah. announced last year mm -hmm. yeah i'd like to see more of that and that also seems like something that can maybe slot in those august september release slots um just like a small quaint like monster hunt uh, not monster hunter monster rancher slash uh harvest moon looking type game it seems fun to me I really i'm looking like forward the art style. to whatever yeah and game freak always does a good job when it comes to their weird one-off games like i don't know if you've played the uh, tembo the badass elephant but that game's a lot of fun. The game came out on like PS4 and on uh, and on Steam. And so, yeah, whenever Game Freak goes out of their way to make something that's not Pokemon, I usually end up enjoying it. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, needless to say, I really think that I'm excited about this E3 because... Me too. It's like, it's not even the situation where it could be like, oh, well, they might not show a lot of things that'll be interesting because we, we know of things exactly. already. Like, we know... It's like there's Animal no way Crossing that... We Mansion might be disappointed by, the by like, the lack of surprise announcements, but there's no way that we're going to come out of this one disappointed unless every single game we just talked about ends up looking really bad. Right. But I feel like it's kind of hard to screw up Animal Crossing unless you, you know, go well, full Amiibo Festival with it. But I mean, <laughs> but I mean realistically, it, it's hard to screw up a mainline Animal Crossing game. There really hasn't been a bad one. Mm -hmm. So... It's going to be great. I remember uh, E3 2015... 
we're sitting around your laptop and we see Animal Crossing. We get excited and then we're like, wait a yeah. minute. Oh, what's, what's that's still one Mario of the best reactions on my channel. Yeah, <laughs> it was great. <laughs> the one thing I will say, though, uh, this might be kind of a downer, is I think if any game does get delayed this year, I do think it could be Animal Crossing. I think we could see a push of Animal Crossing if it does end up getting like a December release announcement. I could see a push to February or March. Um, didn't you say in the investors meeting that they announced that it was still coming? They did announce it was still coming in the investors meeting that just happened in May of 2019. But things can change. And I think if anything is going to get delayed, I think it might be Animal Crossing. Uh, well, it better not. <laughs> yeah, I hope not. I hope not. But I really feel like it might be. It is in so. Nintendo's best interest not to delay yeah. Animal Crossing on the Switch. That's not <laughs> well, a threat, you said it yourself. Too. A... You said it yourself, too, that it does seem like a really packed holiday. Um, and so they might feel like, well, you know what? It's not really going to hurt us if we do this, if they have all these other games. Um, but again, I don't want that. I'm just saying that I'm also bracing for that being a potential thing that might happen. Okay. I'd say delay yeah. Pokemon and make it look less like a 3DS game and more like well, a that's, skin. Well, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. <laughs> all right, Roger. I think we've covered it all. If anything all else right, pops right. up, we'll get together and chat. We Ooh, haven't done a lot of these lately, but... Well, there hasn't been a lot to talk about, exactly. to be fair. So. We'll just turn the microphones on and have a chit-chat for these people. There you go. That always works. Fruit salad. <laughs> Me and uh, Dan are talking about bringing that back on the other channel. Should. I'll be happy to join you. I always get, I get people complaining that we haven't done it in a while. I'm like, why do you want to listen to this garbage? Fruit salad. <laughs> yummy, yummy. Well, Roger, thank you for talking about E3 with me. You're I look welcome. forward to seeing your your tweets and, your, well, I don't look at Twitter, your Instagram posts about, you yep. know, the show floor and all that. Yep. Where can people find you on the internet, Roger? Find me at Roger's Base everywhere on YouTube, on Twitter, on Twitch, and on Instagram. And uh, it probably won't be this week. I'm assuming you're posting this this week at some point. Yeah, I think um, it's it won't tonight be, or tomorrow. Yeah, it won't be this week, but it will be next week. I'm putting up a video of my visit to Nintendo headquarters in Ooh. Kyoto. Cool. Which uh, was a lot of fun. I got to go to the old Nintendo building and both of the new Nintendo buildings. So basically there is uh, the big white classic building you know, that everybody has seen in images. And then their new campus. And their new campus has multiple buildings. And uh, I got some really fun little video clips and things. And I chronicled the entire walk from the JR train station in Kyoto to Nintendo headquarters. And I, it's going to make for a great video. I'm really looking forward to posting that one. So did you like zoom in with your camera into the windows to see if you can see <laughs> right to try to see if I could see uh, Pikmin or Fire Emblem or something? No, unfortunately, <laughs> I didn't do that. I didn't do that. Uh, Kit from Nintendo was making fun of me on Instagram. He had mentioned he's like, hey, was the security guard mad at you giving you a weird look? He's like, it's not not pictured in the picture. Security guard off camera being like, what's this? weird tourist doing so. what is this gaijin doing over here <laughs> right 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 but no i i mean everybody was really nice and uh and it was a cool visit so yeah <laughs> yeah i look forward to seeing what you come up with that yeah so thank you guys for listening i know this was an hour but i think this is probably what they wanted they keep complaining oh, yeah. that we don't do this is what the people want for yep. sure i'm gonna be doing a lot more e3 related videos uh, i think i'm gonna talk a little bit more in depth of what i want to see from luigi's mansion 3 and animal crossing and whatnot so stay tuned if you want more from e3 until then i'll talk to you guys later Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I stole your catchphrase. Bye-bye. No! Eat to mine now! <laughs> <laughs>